Hi everybody, welcome to CDIS 4017 Speech and Hearing Sciences 1. Um, you have already started this course with Mrs. Boyce and you will be um, starting section 2 which is focusing on the speech science part of the speech and hearing sciences and I will be your instructor for the section 2 of the course. Um, Alright, uh, this basic video is going to provide you a review of um, what to expect in Section 2 of the course. So my name is Dr. Chaya Guntupali. I will be the instructor. I'm a faculty in the Department of Audiology and Speech Language Pathology and my area of interest is voice. Um, so I will be teaching the Section 2 which is the acoustics and the speech science aspect of this course. Your course will begin on October 12th, the day after fall break. So hope you all, when you get to see this, have had a well-rested fall break and ready to start the section two of the course. Um, you find my contact um, email there. It says nanjandeshwar at etsu.edu. I've recently had a name change. I'm sure Mrs. Boyce has already talked to you about that. And so um, you will address, even though the email says nanjandeshwar, um, my last name, um, you can address me as Dr. Guntapali. My office is located in Lamb Hall 254. I have two teaching assistants for this course, Kelly Morgan and Nancy Draper. Kelly Morgan has taken this course in the past um, in, and so she understands the ins and out of the um, online course. So you can use her or me and my other um, teaching assistant, Lindsay Draper, um, as a resource for you through this um, course. My office hours, um, I have on-campus office hours in my office on Tuesdays between 9 and 10 a.m. Um, you can also schedule by appointment office hours if you can make that time. Um, I will try and organize. In the past, it's always worked when I've tried to organize some study sessions on campus. These sessions can be utilized for you to come and get to know me. We can put a um, name, um, I mean face to the name because it's an online course. You can ask me course-related information, basically going through review of the course material. I will try and provide two to three times during this um, half of the semester. I will post some days and times on um, your discussion board once the course starts and we will try to come up on an agreed time that is convenient for some of you to be on campus. I will also open up a WebEx um, link so if you're off campus and you cannot make it on campus but you have the ability to stay on internet connection I will post a link the day before our study session and you can access that link from your course homepage to join the study session. I will also try and record these links or the study sessions and will post the links for everybody to view on your D12 or course website. The recommended text is Raphael Borden and Harris at Speed Science Primer. You can either use the fifth or sixth edition. My PowerPoint notes should be very helpful, but for your lab assignments, um, it'll be helpful if you had access to um, the Speed Science Primer. If you intend not to buy the book, you can come by my office and take a look at the book. You can make a photocopy for lab assignments if needed. So what does this course um, talk about? You've already had, you're, you're finishing up with the phonetics aspect of it where you take speed sounds and you transcribe the speed sounds and you understand the transcription process, normal versus disordered, influence of dialect, and etc. The purpose of this course is we want to understand the different terminologies in speed signs. Our focus is how do we identify vowels and consonants, right? Acoustical properties of vowels and consonants. When do we know somebody is saying a certain vowel and when do we know when somebody is saying a certain consonant? So there are certain properties acoustically. We will talk about the source filter theory of vowel production. We talk about different models of speech production and speech perception, meaning what, how you produce um, um, speech and how you perceive speech. We'll talk about when we um, produce and perceive speech. There's something called a feedback mechanism of speech. What are different feedback mechanisms that we use? Um, some things that we use to correct ourselves. Maybe we make a mistake and we realize that that was not what we intended to say. So there is a feedback that's like an auditory feedback. 
So we'll talk about the feedback mechanisms. We will briefly talk about instrumentation, clinical instrumentation available to measure acoustics of speech production and the ability to identify use of these clinical instruments in the measurement of acoustic phonetics. We won't get as much hands-on in this um, aspect of the course, but the lab assign the lab demo that we will do will be using those instrumentation. We can talk about some instrumentation that you can download on your computer. There are free softwares that are or programs that are available that you can download um, during the course to play around with doing different measurements or acoustic measurements of speech. The courses um, in your D12 will be divided into course modules. So if you've already looked at your um, content page, our modules have been created. I will and start adding as soon as um, by next week, hopefully I'll start uploading um, all your materials, your course um, PowerPoints and lecture materials, because there will be a recorded um, lecture for every PowerPoint that is posted. So please ensure that you go through those modules and you will watch those lectures as you go through the PowerPoint, because there's a lot of information that I do during the lectures, which will be helpful for you in understanding the material. Course assignments, you will have two lab assignments, um, lab one and lab two, and I'll go over the due date for that when I pull up your course um, outline. But you'll have two lab assignments, and these lab assignments are very helpful in taking what you obtain in the lecture and then watching the lab demo and trying to understand the vowels and consonants aspect of it. There will be a discussion board. Um, again, if you go through the discussion board section, we have created different modules on the discussion board that corresponds to the modules and the lectures that are posted in your content section. The discussion board for each lecture is open only for a week. And so if there is a discussion board question which either gets posted on your discussion board or is asked at the end of the discussion, I mean of the lecture, you will address that discussion board question in the respective discussion module. Now, if you do not respond within that one week that the discussion board is open, you are not um, allowed to uh, post the same answer in a different discussion board or email us. So please use the discussion board to address your discussion um, questions for that particular lecture. You'll have two quizzes and one final examination. Um, each quiz um, is 50 points and your final examination is cumulative. And I think um, um, I'll go over these again. Um, each of the, your quizzes and your final examination is going to be timed. So once you enter your examination, please ensure that you pace yourself adequately to complete the exam within the allotted time. And also ensure that um, because most of my quizzes and final examination will have a certain number of questions on one page and once you flip the page and go forward there is no way you can come back to answer the questions that you've already completed so please pace yourself be prepared for the exam don't rely on looking up your notes to write the exam the idea of the exam and the the purpose of the timing is to ensure that you have reviewed the material before you come in and take your exam okay um, course related communication, anytime we want to communicate, please look for um, information on your news, that is your course homepage, discussion board, if there is appropriate module forums, if there's anything related to subject matter, I will post on the discussion board, and also there will be any correspondence via email if that is something that we, so please do even your course related communication, please post your information on discussion board, and only use email for your uh, any personal emergencies or personal information that you would like to communicate. But if you have any questions about the content, please tend to use the discussion board so every person can benefit from your question and my answer to that particular question. Lab assignments, as I already mentioned, there'll be two lab assignments. We'll go over those due dates when we come to the syllabus outline. And please ensure that you submit your lab assignment by, by 5 p.m. on the assigned date. If you don't turn it in on Dropbox, we have, oh, we'll create a Dropbox for you to turn it in via Dropbox. You can um, put, place it in my mailbox on campus. Um, we have our executive aide, Ms. Williams' office. My mailbox is inside that office. Or you can also fax it to us, um, and I will post the fax number um, under the lab assignments page when we post the lab assignment. But if it does not turn in via these three modalities by 5 p.m., your lab assignment will not be created after the due date. Okay? 
The same thing with quizzes. You have to submit by 5 p.m. on the assigned date. And all of these assigned times, 5 p.m. is Eastern Standard Time. We work on the Tennessee um, Eastern Standard Time. So please, if you live in California, if you live in the Mountain Time, please ensure that you complete all your assignments by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Your, exam your quizzes will include fill in the blanks, multiple choice, true or false, short answers, possibly labeling. It will be a timed exam. Okay. Your final exam is comprehensive, and again, it's, it's a timed exam that will be at the end of your course. And this is an online course, and we understand that you take your exam relying on your internet um, access. So we highly recommend, because we've done this, I've taught this course over the past three years. This is my fourth year doing it online. One of the main complaints are the... Um, difficulties, not complaints, but difficulties students have is sometimes their internet goes away when they are in the middle of taking an assessment. So we highly recommend that you take your exam on campus or at home and use an ethernet connection instead of relying on a wireless. If you lose your internet briefly, it's okay. Sometimes you can go back in and you can finish in the time period allotted. If you lose power or if your, your computer freezes, you're not able to sign out of the exam, try to submit the exam and, and call me and let me know or send me an email. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can, but there are times I'm in clinic or um, that I want to be, be um, on 24-hour like access to my internet. So give me time to respond to you, but we'll always ensure that we will come up with a reasonable plan of action if you go through any of these difficult while taking your online exam. Again, I briefly mentioned about this, your discussion board. Under the discussion tab, there is a module for each discussion forum. And about 90% of those discussion forums require for you to participate in the discussion forum. You will receive up to 25 points towards your grade for your participation. We will monitor this. We will comment on it. I'll be monitoring the discussion board. My two teaching assistants will be monitoring the discussion board. We will comment on your discussions that you place. And towards the end of the semester, we will grade you on your discussions. And you are eligible to receive up to 25 points towards your grade based on the discussions you do on the discussion board. Now. The quality of the response is important. It's not that you just have to participate and you get a grade. And so the, the quality of your discussion is, should be meaningful, should contribute to understanding of the material, should address the question that has been asked. Okay. Also use the discussion board to ask any questions you may have related to that particular lecture or that particular topic in that forum. So that way everybody gets access to your question and my answer or my, my teaching assistant's answer to that question. There are some things, this is an online course, so we have to have some course etiquette so we're all on the same page as to how this online course is going to work. When you send us an email, whether it is to me or my teaching assistant, I prefer that when you send an email to my teaching assistant that it is copied to me as well. All course decisions are based um, um, are by, are made by me, not my teaching assistants. My teaching assistants assist me to communicate, um, to look through your um, assignments, um, uh, help us with the discussion board. But any decision about late assignments or not completing your discussion um, um, questions or um, your internet glitches during the exam, all decisions are based by me. So, I mean, are made by me. So if you have any difficulty, please ensure that when you email my teaching assistant that I am copied on that email. In your email, always include a subject line. It can say um, um, exam glitch, or it can say question about grade, or it can say question about the lab assignment. So please ensure that there is always a subject line. Always address the email to the professor or my teaching assistant. Please address them by their name or the, by their title and then sign your name at the end. You will say Dr. Guntapalli or Miss Lindsay, Miss Kelly. So please give um, address the email to them and then sign your name at the end. I prefer that you, since we have about 50 to 60 students in the class, use email only to convey any personal emergency or any personal questions regarding grades. But you have a question that is related to lab questions or um, content related, please post again. This is the same thing I'm probably saying it the third time. 
please post it under your discussion board so I can go in and answer that so others can benefit from my answer and your um, questions because there might be other people in your class that might have similar concerns or questions like you. Please be very polite when you um, email or post something on the discussion board because when you word something and you're not using emot you're not face to face we don't see your facial expressions so sometimes the content of the email or your tone of the email might be offensive so be very careful of how you address the email even when you you know this is an online course there are going to be frustrations sometimes you are going to get upset if your internet you know um, um, stopped in the middle of your exam so we understand that there can be glitches and frustrations in an online course and we are more than welcome to address this and work with you on this but please be respectful and don't make any in don't send an inappropriate or disrespectful email um, um, if you have any such frustrations or um, difficulties during the online course okay and as I said um, we will try to respond to your email your discussion board give us a 48 hour period when it's an exam I'll try to respond within a 24 hour period but for your discussion board questions or other questions please give it 48 hours to respond to it during the school week and again sometimes your responses may not be direct to you it could take the form of a news on a detail I might post a video response and I'll post a um, a message saying I post a video response to this particular question or I'll add a comment on the discussion forum so so one of the things with online courses the more you're actively engaged in the discussion forum and the more you address your difficulties throughout the course it becomes an easier transition because we don't meet in on like on campus and we don't see each other every week so just ensure that the more you're involved with the course it makes this process and understand the course material much easier okay um, discussion groups we've talked about it be very positive and constructive in group discussions try to read through what other people have commented and then um, see if you wanted to add to that comment if you wanted to um, and maintain that thread and reply button instead of starting a new topic um, be patient and read the comments of other group members before you enter your remarks um, again be very timely in your discussion groups again you have one week to answer and so keep that as your um, put it on your calendar because it's easy you have other courses you're taking it's very easy to forget your due dates so put it on your calendar ensure that due dates are there and keep up with those due dates and I said the more involved you are in an online class the more successful you are to be able to meet the deadlines and, and, and um, uh, understand the course material so briefly I'm gonna quickly go over our um, syllabus outline here so if you look through here we have our course schedule and summary I've posted the date that particular date your lecture will be open your PowerPoint will be posted there are readings on this based on the edition 5 of the book but as I said you can use the edition 6 the readings just help you supplement the information that is provided on your PowerPoints and my lectures gives you a better understanding as I said it also helps you with your assignments again if you choose not to buy the book you can come by my office I have two copies of the book and you can make a photocopy for to help you with your assignment okay so as I said there will be two lectures per week on a Monday and a Wednesday the lecture will be posted a couple of things that I want you to pay attention to is make sure that you have um, the due dates so quiz one will be posted on October 24th at 5 p.m. and you'll have two days October 26th but once you start the quiz then you have to finish the quiz within the time period your assignment one will be posted at a certain time and then it's due then assignment two is posted then the assignment two um, will be due on a certain date so ensure that you look for this information you look for where um, you are um, required to monitor your due dates and keep those in mind so that you don't miss these due dates now usually I give a practice quiz but since you've already taken the first half of the course with Mrs. Boyce you have an idea of how the quiz works how to go into detail and things so please remember keep that in mind and note down your due dates on your syllabus outline okay and finally what I want to do is there is a document on your 
um, detour under the syllabus uh, module would say syllabus review confirmation. I would like for you to um, download this document, read and review the syllabus. I want you to read everything that's on your syllabus, possibly even watch this video and check the box and type your name in the space confirming that you understand your responsibility in completing this course. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. Online involves a lot of responsibility from your end. We'll try to remind you of the due dates. We'll try to post it on the course homepage. But keeping um, yourself prepared and writing those due dates is going to help you through those to get through this course. Submit this document. Sign and submit this document by October 17th, 5 p.m. in the Dropbox. So we have created a section to put that um, document in the Dropbox. Okay. I look forward to having you in class um, in the second half of this semester and I am here. Do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have and this is a fun course and we'll get through this course and I look forward to even seeing you during my office hours and study sessions. Okay.